Hi everyone, my name is Daisy, and for many, many years now, standardized testing has become increasingly excessive in our school. The high stakes have parents and educators and even students wondering if we're too focused on the test or if we're lacking um, the teaching. So with that being said, I believe that standardized testing is being undermined, or in other words, damage, is damaging students' education. First of all, I believe that standardized testing is economically biased. There is a correlation of family income and in test scores, and for example, the SAT favors wealthier students because the wealthier, the wealthier students have easier access to test preparation, tutoring, they have um, money to afford classes in comparison to a student who doesn't. And second of all, the condition and the quality of schools. If a school, if a, a wealthier school in comparison to a school that's um, in the lower income, they will have more um, tools for students to use in order to practice for these standardized testing. And it's also, um, in addition, a study by the Annie E. Casey Foundation found that the gap for achievement test scores between rich and poor have grown almost 60% since the 1960s but are now almost as twice as large as the gap between white students and children of other races. In a 2013 chart called the SAT Averages of College Brown Seniors by Family Income, they compared families from income ranging from zero to $2,000 and then $2,000 to $200,000. And this chart demonstrated that those who received the less amount of income a year um, had a lower score in comparison to those who received 200,000 more a year. So the question does occur, if, no standardized, if there are no standardized testing, how will we know how students and programs are doing? And this takes part from the teacher. The teacher will then have to have careful observation and documentation of student work. And by that, they will be able to see what the student needs to work on, um, what they're suffering with, what they're struggling with, and that way the teacher can work with their students and the class as a whole and see what else they can learn together. And instead of focusing on the standardized testing too much, we should take more time to focus on real, like real life learning tasks because eventually it'll be more useful and it'll be an, act, it'll be an accurate measuring achievement and provide more information for the teacher and the teaching as well. So that brings up my second point. The multiple choice format is an inadequate assessment tool. So you are all familiar with the A, B, C, or D, maybe sometimes E. And because we are being forced to, we are being taught to teach to the standardized testing, we are taught to give standardized answers. So what happens to J, K, L, M, N, O, P? We are being, fo we're being forced to focus on staying inside of a box in our mind. And we are being limited, well students are being limited, from thinking outside of A, B, C, or D. And of course, on the other hand, Herbert J. Wallerberg in his, um, in his article, Standardized Test Effectively Measures Students' Achievement, he found that the US students who anticipated having to pass a standardized test for high school, including more science and math, were more likely to complete homework and talk with their parents about schoolwork. But the thing that stood out to me here was science and math. What about art? What about drama? What about drawing um, band? There are more types of intelligence that we are not allowing them to express, them as in students, because of their testing approaches, because we're being forced to teach to the test. And that brings up my last point. Teachers are forced to focus on teaching to the test. Based on a Washington Post of 2015, a majority of respondents, 64%, said that too much emphasis has been placed on testing and a majority also said that the best way to measure the success of school is not through tests, but whether the students are engaged and feel hopeful about the future. And because of standardized testing, we are being limited from expanding and allowing ourselves to think outside of the box as well. And of course, standardized testing does have its benefits. It's very useful for college to choose their students because of the test scores. But just as Philip Harris in his article, standardized tests does not measure students' achievement. He states that there are so many attributes, there are so many attributes that can be measured such as creativity, critical thinking, leadership skills, skills compassion, curiosity, and the, the list goes on. And just as students' education is being undermined, student engagement is also being undermined. So to end my talk, I leave with this. 
Standardized testing is a useful tool to use when it comes to education, but I strongly believe that it shouldn't be the only tools, tool to use from now on. Thank you. Five twelve. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you go? Five fifty. Five twelve. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> sorry, just looking at the last one in front of me. All right, Daisy, you identify the topic area. Your claim, I think, is a little bit less specific than it needs to be. And in fact, the, the, there is a proposition there, but it needs to be signposted uh, and, and highlighted a little bit more, sort of like we talked about, uh, do the opposite of what the English teachers tell you to do, you know, make sure that everybody knows that this is your point. I'm paying attention, so I heard it, but I'm not sure everybody would have heard it uh, because it's kind of buried in the middle of your, your explanation and your definition of what you're talking about. So I think you need to be a little careful about that. I was going to say the same thing about Al-Fadi, but I didn't do that. I meant to do that. So when you listen to her comments, they apply to you too. Uh, <laughs> the, I, I thought you did a good job kind of explaining uh, the, the criticisms, especially of uh, the SAT. Uh, it was a little confusing to me because it sounded at first like you were previewing what the secondary points were, and then I realized you were actually making your argument on the first point, and there were multiple supporting points for that issue, and it wasn't until you were done with that that I realized that that was, in fact, the complete first point, and it wasn't the preview at all. You had actually started your argument, and I think that's a little bit confusing. So I think you need to preview first before you get into the argument. And then uh, th there's a little bit of uh, conflating between the, you know, what the SAT is and other kinds of uh, standardized tests. And I'm not sure that your criticisms of the standardized tests that are based on economic bias uh, are, are applicable outside of the SAT. So because you spent a lot of time on that, on that first point, it might sound to people like that's the argument that you're making later on. Like, uh, because in this class, for instance, if you're taking a quiz, holy crammy, because you make uh, $1,000 less a month that you're going to do less. So, you know, that might be giving people the relief. This is, well, the reason I'm getting sixes on my quizzes is because I'm a lower income situation. I'm not exactly sure that that would fit for those <laughs> kinds of standardized tests. So I, I think that there's a little bit where you are putting those two things together, and I'm not sure that that argument applies to you know, all standardized tests. It's more specific to the SAT. And I think you can make that distinction a little more clearly. Um, your evidence on the first point was a little bit stronger because it is more detailed there. After that, uh, there's some very broad generalizations that are being made. I, I, you know, I, it's a reasonable question to ask, but what about F, G, H, I, J, K, other answers? And you know, the question, of course, is are there other answers? In some subjects, there probably are not. You know, like you're doing math or science, like we said, it's like, well, let me think outside of the box. If the answer is not really two, the answer is something in the area of less than 10, but more than negative 12. You know, it's like, I, I'm not sure that that's really what we're looking for uh, in those circumstances. And so as a consequence, I think it's, it's really kind of an esoteric argument you're making here. Um, I don't know that they use SA, not excuse me, standardized tests in uh, some of the classes that you're talking about. You mentioned band and art and those kinds of things, and I don't know if they have any standardized tests that they use in that. They use uh, accomplishment, they use performance sorts of things, sort of like we do in here. We have a combination of both. Yeah, we got an assessment of you know, your skills when you are presenting, 
and uh, the writing that you do. Plus, we have the standardized kinds of in instruments that we're using as well. So the question then becomes, do people not learn something because they are assessed in that way? And that seems to be your inference, but I didn't hear any proof on that, just kind of this general question about it. And I think that that's a little bit problematic. You do have a good quote there. However, the quote seems to suggest the exact opposite. I mean, it starts off and it sounds like you're making your, the, the rebuttal argument here that standardized tests really work well at helping people learn math and science and those kinds of things. And the first part of the quote is like, okay, wait a second, what, why are you reading this evidence? And, you, and your, your point ultimately is, but it doesn't talk about these other subjects. And I'm not exactly sure that the standardized tests are designed to do that. And I, I think that you need to show that, for instance, that those things are being neglected as a consequence of this. I think that's maybe the part of the argument that is missing here, that you need to show that because we're so hung up on doing these measurements and that that's the way that the schools are being assessed, that they sacrifice some of these other skills in some way. I think there might be an argument there that needs to be developed a little bit. Uh, I thought you presented very nicely. You have excellent audience contact and variety in your voice. So you sell us on the sincerity of your belief and your attitude about the subject. I think your proof needs to be a little bit stronger. All right, thank you.